Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot. Cheers! Um, we are going to do a board game vlog as well as some life vlog, and I'm going to drink some of this wine. Uh, friends of mine and I were going to do a podcast tonight where we got some wine and we talked about games and between the two different countries and three different time zones. Unfortunately, we all kind of petered out on the idea. Um, we will be doing it soon. We're rescheduling as we speak, but I'm probably the only one left awake as I am out here on the West Coast. Um, so I decided to take this vlog into my own hands and can chat with you all. So um, I'm really excited though. I have uh, been looking at uh, my schedule. <laughs> the holiday happened. Lots of December went toward just trying to keep some stuff on the shelves at work. And um, once that peters out, kind of mid-January, we went into, okay, so what didn't we sell? What things need to be um, on sale soon? Let's get an overstock sale happening. And we kind of went through that. And so February was much about getting this sale together, figuring out what needs to be on it and if it's at the right store. Um, then a couple days when the sale is over, I'll be doing inventory at both stores. And then maybe my job might calm down. <laughs> um, it was neat. Uh, the holiday is always kind of interesting to see what does or doesn't sell because you're very much basing off of sales patterns throughout the years, sales patterns the last holiday, and what you think might sell. So um, some titles like Machikoro Deluxe just eclipsed regular Machikoro so fast. Um, and that silly little tin, too. Um, things like uh, King of Tokyo didn't sell this year, even though it sold amazingly well the last two years. Um, code names came in right on the money for us. Um, we got maybe 100 copies, and they sold out in days, and uh, Super Fight did very well. And then we had some kind of like weird disappointments. We had uh, Spirits of the Rice Patty didn't come in, so we couldn't sell it. Neither did Nippon, Signori. A lot of games that were maybe scheduled sort of to be in did not come in. Um, a lot of things have come out in January and February that I was like, well, if you were just one month earlier, you would have had a lot more sales. Um, things like Orleans was actually a very big disappointment to both of our stores, whereas Blood Rage did just fine. Um, Orleans, uh, very good, very solid, medium weight, Euro, easy to learn. You'd think it would have hopped off the shelves, but it's got maybe missing some shelf appeal or something because you have fewer salespeople being able to talk with people. So you want the boxes to do their own sales. We'll be looking at why those didn't sell. Lords of Waterdeep didn't sell at all. I think it's reached its it's too much cheaper on Amazon or cool stuff for a store to be able to sell it. I think it's reached that point. Um, but it, it was been, it's been fun to kind of get the holidays wrapped up and then start working toward like, where's your inventory at? Would you like to get it there? Would you like to get it here? How much should be in inventory in any given time? And like kind of reining everything back in for the slower spring months. Um, the last piece of personal news, I have developed tinnitus, which is like a ringing in the ear. Um, it's in both my ears at this point. It started on Christmas. There's no known cause. I didn't get hit. I didn't hear a gunshot. I didn't have construction. Um, the biggest boon I can name is that it is not being caused by hearing loss. So, uh, my ears are fine just ringing and um, it's very difficult for me because I I am constantly annoyed right now and so when people are not nice or not kind or not logical I'm having a larger a harder time not confronting people on the internet I'm having internet rage issues so I've just been kind of shying away from conversations that frustrate me when people are jerks and there's a lot of jerks on the internet, so I've been avoiding it. Um, January itself had uh, two big weekends for me. Uh, one was OrcaCon and one was Sasquatch Game Day. OrcaCon is in its first year. It was a kickstarted event out in Everett, Washington, which is north of Seattle. Um, I volunteered my time uh, to run part of the game library for work and uh, they kind of overscheduled us. So I spent a lot of my time just teaching games out amongst the people. Um, I taught my friend Jason who came up 
um, how to play Terra Mystica with a couple friends of mine, which was a delight. Um, my friend Nicholas was in from New York just to go to this OrcaCon, and um, Stephanie Straw came out from Arkansas to see people and go to this con, and just being able to see all these people in one little place and have them all to myself was delightful. And I'm very, very, very glad. And um, I will say one of the most fun times I can remember is uh, the dinner we had before we all had to part ways. So uh, we all got to sit down and have a real dinner together before everyone went off to the airport. Uh, that was good, good fun. Uh, OrcaCon was so small that I can't really say whether or not it's going to be a sustainable con, but it looks very promising. It's a tabletop focused con. It took over one small hotel. It had one of the smallest vendor halls I've ever seen, but it had a giant gaming area. It had a big old like ballroom, and it's 24 hours gaming. Um, we've made some recommendations for them for next year, and uh, Card Kingdom itself is probably going to run events for them, and maybe even sell games, because we didn't actually sell games this time. Um, I'm, I'm very excited and very interested in what will happen next year. Um, I also got to play uh, Prodigal's Club for the first time that weekend, and that was such a great game. Um, I put that into part of my top ten for last year, which is um, surprising because I only got to play it. I have played it twice now and that's it. And I still think it's just such a cool, clever game. Um, the other weekend was Sasquatch Game Day. And Sasquatch Game Day is a one-day event. Everyone kind of gets together and plays games over, um, a whole day. And we got there super early in the morning. I actually took the whole day off. And we played our 4x4. Four four. Um, so for any of you who have never heard of this thing that we made up, and I'm sure it's existed elsewhere, we played four simultaneous games, four players, four different boards, and each player would take one turn at a board and then go to the next and the next and the next and go around in circles until all four games were done. Um, this required games that had enough heft to them, enough meat to them, that you're not just running and going crazy on adrenaline, you actually get to sit down and make decisions. Uh, you need games that don't have any variable turn order at all. And you need games that have little to no player interaction. I can't have reactions, I can't have reactions, I can't have anything triggered by anyone else. Um, you have to have it where you take your turn and your turn is kind of insular. So the four games we have developed into that were Concordia, Trajan, Shipyard, and London. Since then, we've also figured out that the Martin Wallace game Ships works just fine for this, but at the time we had those four and we could have subbed in Lewis and Clark. Um, Shipyard went pretty well. Shipyard is kind of a weird Ma uh, Vladimir Suki game from Czech Games and uh, it is very much that you either need to, if you're dealt really good end of game objectives, work on them, and if you're not, work on maximizing how many points you could possibly get out of the game without your in game scoring. Um, to the point where it almost feels like the in game scoring is a little too imbalanced, but I don't believe that because I've won without great in game scoring. Um, great game, I came in second. Uh, then we played London, which is a card tableau Martin Wallace game. Uh, very interesting engine builder. Uh, kind of, the first time I played Glass Road, it reminded me of playing London. Uh, it, not, not mechanically similar, but in that you just very linear focus on one engine and trying to make it go. Um, interesting game, has a little bit of a board mechanic, came in second. <laughs> Play Concordia, which is Matt Gertz, and it's two to five players. It's fabulous. You uh, build out your colonists on this map, and you're going to different provinces, and you're in different cities, making different resources. And each card that you purchase is endgame scoring toward how well you did on any of those given aspects. Um, really cool game. I came in fourth. Just tanked it, just could not survive in that game. And then last we played Trajan, which is Feld, and I won! 
barely, barely, barely. Um, I, I very well could have lost it, but I played Trajan. Uh, it was, it's very different trying to play Trajan without being able to just stare at your Moncala for three people's turns. You just kind of arrive at a board and have to try and remember where you were in your process of getting your right colors into the right places, and uh, very, very difficult. Um, the rest of the Sasquatch day, so that was four hours. Um, really fun. I hope to be able to add ships in at some point, although having ships and shipyard is hilarious, and if we could just find two more nautical ones, we'd be set. Um, we played uh, that day, we played Floating Market, we played uh, Among Nobles, we played the Space Team card game, and boy oh boy, that was a long, long day of pretty me mediocre games, and I apologize if you do care for these games, because they just did not hit with our group. Uh, Floating Market is a betting game. You are trying to figure out what a dice pool might roll. Each player can contribute dice to that dice pool, and it's anything from like D6s all the way up to D12s. And it was, it was not a game where you got to roll dice and then make decisions with them. It was make guesses and then roll dice to confirm them. And it ended up being way more frustrating for most of us than anything else, though I won, so we'll call that awesome. The game was not for us. Um, I'm glad I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I felt a little bit bad because I know a lot of people love it and the colors and the dice are just gorgeous, but not for us. Um, then, let's see. We played among nobles. In Among Nobles, you have um, family who have a child, and then if it's a son, you can call to have other people give them their daughters to make a pair. Or if you have a daughter, if someone else is trying to get married, you hand off your daughter and you try and get that player to accept your daughter. Um, the game is interesting. It it knows it has these gender roles, so like women have babies and you can't have babies unless you're married to a man and once you're married the woman kind of slips under the man card and no longer has its previous traits, it only has those like kind of baby making traits and even the quotes on the bottom of the cards were pretty genderific, uh, so kind of annoyed the whole time I was learning the game and then playing the game, two of our players ran out of valid actions to take, so they had to just kind of play on autopilot. They they just took their turn and passed, and they didn't really have any investment left in the game. So it was between two of us, but it wasn't a fun game to play or anything. Um, and then the Space Team card game, it was better than the other two, but it was still... It was an implementation of a game that's pretty darn fun as is. So as the app space team has each player kind of on their phone or their tablet or whatever and you see these things in the window and you have to kind of like yell out to everyone else, you know, bang the drum and whoever on their screen has a drum they have to bang it or whatever. Uh, the card game has that element to it but not in such a fun magical way as the app seemed to. To me the app for something like space team is Star Trek speak from when I was six, you know, like those phones are all talking to each other and playing this weird game and they interact in super personal ways between the phones and it's just interesting and neat and the card game doesn't have that. Um, so those were all, you know, kind of misses for us. Uh, but overall, the Sasquatch game day was so much fun and the 4x4 was so much fun. By the end of the night, we even got to play our Codenames of Board Games, where we uh, grabbed 25 boxes uh, from around the room and we put them out into a 5x5 five five grid, and then we used those as our Codenames clues. Um, I conscripted uh, Susan to a couple games with us, and it was a good, good chunk of fun, and I'm really glad I got to do that. Um, other than that, uh, Kickstarter has been interesting lately. Karmica came and went, and I backed it, and it looks lovely. And I don't know if it's going to work, because it's a video game designer, again, making a card game. But I do think that they they have 
been proven to make some interesting stuff before. Um, Venus is on Kickstarter right now. I have not backed it yet, just funds-wise, but um, I may well. Uh, it is kind of a retelling of the first Vitala Sarda game. Uh, they made the art absolutely gorgeous, just beautiful. And they made a version of the game that I would probably never play, which is a streamlined, more friendly version without uh, main mechanic out of the game. Uh, anything else from Kickstarter? I think I, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I backed the Pursuit of Happiness, um, and I... I loved the idea of playing CV, but I didn't think that CV had enough decisions. I'm hoping the Pursuit of Happiness isn't quite as light, and I'm hoping the cartoony stuff doesn't bother me. Um, I did back Club Zen when it was on Kickstarter. Uh, this was a streamlined version of Viva Java, which the regular Viva Java card game with six to eight players, which was one of the most unique and fun game experiences I've had. And I wish Viva Java was a bigger thing. I've not met a lot of people who have played it and certainly don't care about it. Um, I thought it had some graphic design problems. The, the different colors of beans were a little too close to each other to play in any kind of dim light. But overall, that game was so cool. So... I hope Club Zen comes back to Kickstarter at some point. Um, if it does, I would almost, I'm going to start begging for a review copy because I do think that's the kind of game that could really use some buzz. I didn't really hear about it much. I saw the Kickstarter had this TC Petty experience thing, and I think that stemmed from some jokes that TC Petty and the rest of the guys know. But um, I don't know TC that well. I got to meet him very, very briefly at BGDCon, which I, I, I regret not being able to hold a conversation at the time. I was anxious, and he said hello, and I didn't talk that much. But I, I regret that a little bit. But um, he seems like such a cool guy, and he's got such cool ideas. Um, he does talk very opinionated, but I always think that's actually a good thing. <laughs> So, uh, if Club Zen comes back up on Kickstarter, I will back it in a heartbeat. Uh, I also backed the new Medici, the pretty Medici. I had the Rio Grande English edition, Rio Grande, and uh, I, it's very hard to differentiate between the different resources, but I did find someone on BGG that was looking for it, so we, I sold it to him for enough to back the Kickstarter for the new one. Um, and the last Kickstarter that I'm backing right now is the Unicorn Poop and Zombie in Trails Kickstarter Scarves. Um, because I can. And I'm a um, And that's it for me for now. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you guys would like, keep tuned. We will have some uh, live hangout content for you all soon. Hopefully with plenty of wine and giggles and... Um, I look forward to speaking with you again. Bye.